Hi, everybody. This is Linda Joy Myers, and I'm here to talk to you about writing your memoir. I have written two memoirs, and I started the National Association of Memoir Writers. I've been teaching and learning about memoir writing for the last 30 years. And I want to tell you about a class that I'm going to be teaching this summer, kind of by popular demand. It's, it's going to be about how to craft a publishable memoir. And we're going to talk about what that means. But first, I want to address the kinds of thoughts and feelings that people have when they talk to me about wanting to write a memoir. They tell me that they've had a story tapping them on the shoulder for a long time, which is what happened to me in writing my first memoir, Don't Call Me Mother, stories about the family and stories that would not leave me alone. And I wonder if that's happening with you. Another reason that people want to get started writing their memoir or learn how to really do it is that they want to write a family legacy story. You know, as people get older, and they often are the only people who know the stories of the family and want to save those for later generations. There's many reasons to write a memoir. Another one is sorting through the past, trying to understand what happened. And writing really helps us sort of dig into, uh, you know, what we know that we know and writing sometimes reveals to us things as we're writing that we didn't even know that we were going to say, <laughs> which is what makes it kind of magical. So I want to talk to you about what this class is going to be about and some of the kinds of questions that people come to me with and just let you know that all this is, is coming very soon and is going to be ready for you to jump in and get started. One of the one of the first things is that people ask or worry about, let's say, is where do I begin? I have so many stories. I've been, you know, living for a long time. A lot of things have happened to me. I don't know where to begin. And and then they also talk about I don't know what to include, how much to include. And we're going to address that by talking about themes which uh, means that, that, you know, you're probably going to enter into exploring certain thematic elements in your, in your story. I want to clarify that a, me a memoir is not the story of your whole life. It's a story that's either a slice of your life, a certain angle or set of time, perhaps. Uh, but it, it can also be a longer story, but themed. So it isn't actually the story of your whole life, which will help you feel better about jumping in and starting to write. Another thing uh, that people ask about and worry about, well, there's several things, but one of them is how do I begin? And so the first couple of lessons in this class will be about theme and topic and also how to begin with something we call turning points moments that mattered, moments that are significant, and go on from there to learn how to build your memoir. But I want to address another issue that comes up for people, and that is about exposure and also the sense of the inner critic whispering away about whether you should be writing this memoir, whether it's really okay, how much are you telling? Will the family be angry at me? And the answer is this. When you are writing, you are just writing. You are not publishing. And in fact, it can help to just sort of keep under your hat that you are writing a memoir if you're concerned about family. There's no point in waving it at them and saying, but I won't tell you anything <laughs> about what I'm doing, you know. So, so uh, you know, protect your writing. Keep it safe. Keep it private for a while so that you can have the pleasure of sorting through what you want to say, sorting through the stories that come out without somebody interfering or making you worried about what they're going to say. But but the inner critic is kind of a different angle of 
trouble that can come to us when we're writing. And that's the voice that says, oh, I don't know how to write. I, you know, it's going to be so boring, or I got bad grades in English, or my English teacher told me never to write another poem or whatever happened to you. But just throw those aside. You know, this, this is about you uh, having the desire to write your own story. And this is a course that will teach you how to do that. There are many layers of things to learn. I'm going to talk to you about those in just a moment. These layers include, you know, not only where to begin, but, you know, looking at certain craft elements like how to create a vivid and interesting scene. You'll be taking those turning points that I mentioned earlier, moments of significant uh, action, and you're gonna, those are gonna turn into kind of the spine of your memoir. And then each turning point will turn into a scene. And a scene is the single most, well, one of the most <laughs> important tools you can possibly use to write a good story. Uh, scenes, character development, dialogue, things like that that are part of this course are like what people use in fiction in a novel to write a story that really draws people in. And it's not only about your audience. If you're writing in scene, you are bringing yourself back to another time and place where you are seeing your life and what you did and what you chose to do and what you said and the interactions you had and the feelings you had. You're, you're nine years old again, you know, in a scene you are there. So it, so writing a memoir is a little bit like time traveling, which can be really a lot of fun. There's a lot of ways to sort of get pumped up about the era that you might want to write about, to get inspired by looking at family photographs, for instance, or photographs of yourself at another time and place and age, which I find really wonderful to do. When I was writing my memoir, Don't Call Me Mother, I looked at photographs of my mother, my grandmother, my family, and myself when I was young, and it would help me kind of embody uh, that time and enter into, you know, enter into some of those moments. And the internet is your friend when it comes to <laughs> really finding out what was going on in a certain era. Another way to make your memoir readable and, and publishable is to use scenes that also, of course, you're going to have characters in these scenes. Characters are the people you loved and maybe didn't love as much, but they're based on real people. You need to learn how to take the real people that you knew and create them on the page so the reader can get to know who these people are, what they sounded like, how they talked and walked and dressed what they like to eat, what you like to eat. <laughs> Food's an important part of some of our stories. And then, of course, there's if characters are going to be in your story and you're in your story as a protagonist, people are going to be talking to each other. So you'll be learning about how to evoke what people must have said, might have said, probably said, after all, you didn't have a tape recorder attached to you when you were growing up. But really, it's easier than you might think. I've taught a lot of memoir students, and they do worry about this dialogue thing. For some people, it comes really naturally. There's just sort of something in their head that allows it to come out. But for other people, they're like, oh, my gosh, how can I put these words into this person's mouth? But it's just something you practice. You get better at it. When I started writing, I didn't write dialogue at all. It just really intimidated me. But then I would use a technique that I told people to do, you know, listen to how other people are talking. Listen to the cadence of their words, just people around you. Listen to the kind of language they use. I mean, when people talk, they generally do not sound like a college professor except for college professors who do sound that way. You know, they, th th there's a natural a dialect, a dialect, perhaps, or, you know, we, we know that people in New York talk differently than people in Mississippi. 
and so forth. And so wherever you are from or where the, your characters are from, perhaps they're from another, a different country, they're going to have phrases that are used and unique ways of speaking and certain musicality, perhaps, to the way that they talk. And the more that you write, the easier it gets to actually capture this. But an important part of writing a memoir includes also the inner world that you inhabited as you lived these moments. And we call this in memoir writing reflection, including reflection in your scene about what you thought when certain things were happening. So a scene has action that occurs in a certain place and time and moment. And it has these moments where you're trying to make sense of things. Now, why did this matter to me? You might even speculate about what other people were thinking or wanting or, or try to make sense of what was going on in that particular moment and how things are sorting out for you in your mind over time, as a matter of fact. So there's just so much to, to really, uh, you know, talk about and think about and look at, and all of it is going to be covered in this six-week course. And I'm really looking forward to telling you all about all this. And the other thing, and I'm, I'm looking forward to teaching it uh, to all of you, Another thing that we do talk about in, in learning about memoir is the transformative impact that writing a memoir actually has on people who write it. I've taught literally hundreds of people over the years, and even if they weren't setting out to write, let's say, directly a healing memoir, though some are, they say, I just want to understand things more. Are these things between me and my mother, which was the case for me, you know, that, that I just want to try to understand this better. I want to try to unpack what happened and try to understand them better. So a memoir can have a very, can have a, a healing um, effect. It can be transformative for you. And, and I can't tell you how many times people have said to me, well, I didn't set out to write a transformative memoir, but it really did change me. It really did, you know, give me a new perspective on my life and on what happened. And so there's these sort of other perks <laughs> that we get through the process of writing a memoir. And it's very much obviously a, a you know, process of, of examining, thinking, feeling, reviewing, sleeping on it, writing a draft, writing another draft. So it, it can take a while. So one of the things I'm excited about for this class that uh, I'm doing is, you know, that there's a discussion groups and there's a writing group that can come at the end of the presentation. So I really want you to think about the kind of support and accountability that you need, that you want to have uh, as you continue to work on your memoir. Of course, there's going to be suggestions for assignments. There's going to be writing prompts. I'm going to be giving you handouts with information on them, as well as you'll get the PDF of the slides that we use for the class, and obviously the, the recording. So it's an all-in-one package deal where you get really excellent teaching about all of these things from someone, me, who's been teaching for a super long time. And I love memoir. I love how memoir reveals people's lives and helps people to see through kind of a new perspective, see through new eyes who they are, who they were, to learn about their family and their past and to feel that they've got the exciting and comforting feeling even of putting those stories down on the page and even publishing a book. So I do hope you're able to join me for this exciting class about memoir writing, and I look forward to seeing you there. <laughs>